Number 8. The Rivalry of Ancient Aztec Gods Could bones discovered at the ruins of Mexico's Templo Mayor be evidence of ritual sacrifices to ancient gods? Archaeologists who were excavating at a circular platform at the main Aztec temple found a mysterious box. Inside the box were the remains of a child who experts believe was sacrificed. The temple is located in what was once known as Tenochtitlan, the religious and political capital of the Aztecs prior to Spanish conquerors' arrival in the region in 1521. Before that, a 15-story pyramid stood at the site, and that's where the box filled with Aztec offerings was found. Other things found within the box were an ornamental jaguar emblazoned with an emblem celebrating the war and sun god, Huitzilopochtli, along with starfish, coral, and seashells, and a bird that had also been sacrificed. Experts believe the bird's sacrifice was done as a way to symbolize the descent of Aztec warriors into the afterlife. Even though the discovery of the child's body stunned researchers, it may have also given them insight into the creation myth of these ancient people. The Aztec culture had multiple gods. One of these gods, Miklantikutli, ruled the deepest realm of the underworld. In the Aztec creation myth, there are multiple cycles of the sun, with each one ending in destruction. In order to repopulate the earth, humans must be recreated over and over again. When the god Quetzalcoatl traveled to the underworld, he was met by Miklantikutli, who challenged him to travel around the world four times, blowing a conch shell before being allowed to remove the bones he needed. Although Miklantikutli tricked him, Quetzalcoatl was successful. When he took the bones he'd worked to remove, Miklantikutli tried to stop him by digging a pit to trap the god. Quetzalcoatl fell inside, breaking the bones he was carrying into various sizes, which is how the Aztecs explain that people today are of all different heights. Some experts think this could be why the sacrificial child, who was dressed to look like the sun god, Huitzilopochtli, was found at the foot of the pyramid to appease the ancient gods, maybe even as an offering or blessing for three Aztec kings who were rumored to have been buried near the great temple. These discoveries offer real-world ties to ancient beliefs that ruled the Aztec world and the rituals performed to appease the gods. Number 7 Humans Hunted Mammoths in Mexico Discovering the remains of any woolly mammoth is a remarkable thing that can make the career of any archaeologist. But when a research team found a treasure trove of bones in central Mexico, they didn't expect to uncover the terrifying way the animals died. The bones of at least 14 mammoths were discovered in an area that was being prepared for the building of a new airport in Mexico City. Over 800 individual bones were uncovered in two different underground traps, but it's how they got there that really interested archaeologists. As they worked carefully to remove the bones, the research team from Mexico's National Institute of Anthropology and History realized the bones had been discarded in a pit that was 5.5 feet deep and 80 feet wide. At the time, mammoths roamed the area. There were five different herds living alongside camels and horses. In fact, one of each of these two species were found in the same pit where the mammoth bones were discovered. Up until this find, scientists believe most mammoths died after falling into swamps and were too injured to pull themselves out. But the discovery showed that hunter-gatherers were organized and cunning enough to dig the massive pits to capture mammoths for sustenance. Some scientists even believe larger groups of 20 to 30 hunters would herd the mammoths toward the pit, using torches and branches to scare the animal into going where the other hunters were waiting. One of the mammoth specimens showed signs of an attack, with wounds and healed fractures in their bones, meaning the animal was hunted for years before it was later captured. The research team's discovery of the two different traps could also mean the hunters made multiple large pits in case the mammoths managed to dodge the first. To find out more about how local hunter-gatherers interacted with these massive herbivores, researchers will continue to comb through the hundreds of individual bones for more clues about how the mammoths died. Number 6. Cannibal Explorers 
In the mid-1800s, an expedition by the British Navy set out to find a sea route through the Canadian Arctic to the Orient. Sadly, the voyage was doomed from the start, with elements causing havoc and putting the men at risk when the ocean froze and they became stranded, unable to move their ships. But a new study done on bones found in the area suggests that being icebound wasn't their only problem. The 129 men of the Franklin expedition were so desperate for food that they may have resorted to cannibalism in order to survive. The strange thing about the new study is that the teams expected to be stuck for multiple winters. They'd loaded their ships, the HMS Erebus and the HMS Terror, with enough food to last them as they sailed through the Canadian archipelago on their way through the Northwest Passage. So, why did they resort to cannibalism? Even in the summer months, the seas were filled with enough heavy sea ice that the ships remained stuck, which could be why the men set out on foot on a 1,000-mile trek toward the nearest Hudson Bay trading post. Sadly, they would never make it there. Over time, stories of crew members setting out on their own filtered through local Inuit communities until a Canadian mapmaker heard whispers of cannibalism, where locals described seeing piles of fractured human bones out on the ice. As scientists set out to study the remote area, they found countless bones from the ill-fated crew members, with many cut marks on the bones, telltale signs that the men resorted to cannibalizing their fellow crewmates to survive the harsh conditions. A study done by Canadian anthropologists found signs of breakage on the bones as well as signs the bones had been heated in boiling water to extract their marrow. It might seem like a shocking thing to have done, but experts think the men may have been suffering from scurvy or lead poisoning, which would have at the very least made them feel desperate enough to resort to cannibalism as their only way to make it out alive. Sadly, none of the men survived, and even though researchers have found some of the remains, no one can truly know what happened on the doomed expedition. Number 5 Alien-shaped skulls. Even the most experienced archaeologist comes across something terrifying from time to time. When a group of scientists unearthed skeletons with warped, alien-shaped heads in Mexico, they were understandably shocked. But could the skeletons belong to some creature from another planet? The cemetery where the alien-like beings were found was discovered by residents of a small village called Onavas in the state of Sonora. It was the first pre-Hispanic cemetery found in the state and contained 25 human burials. But these weren't ordinary skeletons. 13 had their skulls deformed into elongated pointed shapes at the top. But that wasn't the only surprise in store for the archaeologists. As they continued to unearth the remains, they realized the other five bodies had mutilated teeth that had been filed into strange shapes. The practice of shaping the heads is known as cranial deformation, and shockingly, it starts in childhood, when wooden boards are tied with cloth to a child's skull, something that has been done in different cultures around the world as a type of ritual practice. Strangely, all of the bodies found in the cemetery belong to children between 5 months and 16 years of age, and only one of the bodies belonged to a female. A number of the skeletons also had earrings, nose rings, or other jewelry made from seashells and snails. The strange burial customs add to the mystery of the discovery, with experts wondering why the bodies were buried together. Whether the ancient Mesoamericans believed their children were some higher being or they perform the cranial mutilations to emulate some kind of futuristic entity, it will take more work from archaeologists to uncover the true origin of the society's customs. Why do you think different cultures adopted this strange tradition? Share your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our videos. Number 4. Mutilated Vampires the discovery of mutilated bodies in a Polish cemetery by archaeologists might have a chilling connection, but does it point to the existence of vampires? At the edge of a small village on the German border, a cemetery containing brutally mutilated bodies from the 13th and 14th centuries was unearthed back in 2016. 
When experts took a closer look at the remains, they found punctures on the spines, one skeleton with its head wedged between two stones, and another of the bodies that had been decapitated. One of the bodies belonging to a woman had even been buried face down with both of her knees broken. But why were these people buried in such horrific ways when all of the other bodies in the cemetery were buried normally? Sadly, something more chilling than blood-sucking vampires could explain why the victims of the brutal burials were targeted. One of the bodies showed signs of a bone condition that would have made her hunch over and might have made her fellow villagers think she was some sort of monster. Studies showed that people who looked differently than everyone else were sometimes the targets of attacks. In medieval times when cholera infected so many, anyone who died first during an outbreak was also believed to be at risk of becoming a vampire, which may be another reason they were singled out. Some thought the dead would rise from their graves intent on feeding on the blood of anyone who crossed their path, so it makes sense that villagers believed cutting off the heads or breaking the legs of the dead would prevent the vampire from harming anyone. Unfortunately, this doesn't make it any less gruesome. Even though it might not prove that vampires in fact existed, the people of the times believe they did. Because of this belief, they adopted the strange and gruesome method of burying their dead. Number 3. Pit of Severed Arms when an archaeological survey team started excavations for a new property development in Bergheim, France, they uncovered a five-acre area filled with ancient pits known as silos. It was a remarkable find, but when they dug a little deeper, they made the chilling discovery of human bones in 14 of the pits they had unearthed. Another pit had an even worse secret to tell. It was filled to the top with human bones, all with cut signs or amputation marks made with a knife or axe. Archaeologists think the remains, the oldest of which date back over 5,000 years, belong to farmers who lived in the area. Over time, more bodies were placed in the pit, with the remains ranging in age from children to adults. The violent end to so many could point to the possibility of a war or some other incident that led to the brutal deaths. Originally, experts thought Neolithic people led a more serene life. The discovery of the bone-filled pits, however, shows that even in ancient times, early humans had conflict and used violence to solve it. Most of the bones uncovered were severed arms, hands, and fingers, but some of the remains belonged to children, one that was less than a year old. Another more gruesome find was the skull belonging to a middle-aged man with a severe fracture that could have only come from a violent attack. Experts researching the pits in France think their discovery was from a battle instead of a brutal form of justice at the hands of ancient people. Number 2. Books Bound in Human Skin It might sound like something out of a horror movie, but in libraries across the world, there are books bound in human skin. The bizarre practice started in the 19th century, but recent discoveries show that the grisly method was a popular one. In 2014, a book owned by the Harvard University Library was confirmed by scientists to have been bound in human skin. Known as anthropodermic bibliopegy, the practice is a macabre one that many people still don't understand. Most of these books, and yes, there are multiple books bound this way, had been created by 19th century doctors who had access to bodies that were being used in universities to practice dissection. The book found at Harvard was covered with the skin of a female mental patient who died of natural causes. It's called Destinies of the Soul and was given by a writer named Arsène Husay to a doctor who agreed to perform the macabre binding. Shockingly, there are other books that have been bound this way. One was made from the skin of the first man hanged at the Bristol Jail in the UK, with the details of his crime inside the book itself. Another book was made from the skin of a murdered man named William Burke, who, along with his partner William Hare, originally worked as resurrectionists or those who dug up bodies to sell to medical schools. 
Instead, the man began killing people and sold the bodies. After he was executed, a book was bound in Burke's skin, and it's now displayed in the Royal College of Surgeons of Edinburgh's museum. For some reason, the hype surrounding books bound in the skin of criminals became a popular fad in the 19th century. Whether it was a macabre fascination or people got vicarious excitement from seeing books made this way, it's a truly horrifying practice that, thankfully, has gone out of style. Number 1. Neanderthal Family Slaughter Sometimes, the best way to get a glimpse into the past is to use modern technology. That's what a group of researchers of Barcelona's Institute of Evolutionary Biology did when they wanted to get a closer look at multiple sets of Neanderthal bones found in a cave in northern Spain. What they found when they examined the remains were the telltale signs of cannibal activity. The family of 12 were killed almost 50,000 years before experts discovered them, but hints to their downfall were obvious, with cut marks on their skulls and jawbones that indicated their tongues had been removed. The bones were also fragmented, which meant that whoever killed the family did so to remove and eat the marrow. To find out more about the family, experts conducted genetic testing that showed the three men in the cave were all from the same family, while the women all had different familial origins. There were also three boys in their early teens and three children between the ages of two and nine found alongside the others. The most shocking thing is that all of the bodies had evidence of cannibal activity, meaning whoever came across them butchered the entire group. With no evidence of fire around the bodies, the unfortunate family members were all eaten soon after they were killed. As grim as it is, the discovery shows the measures Neanderthals took to survive the brutal winners, one that meant doing whatever it took to survive, even resorting to something as taboo as cannibalism. Thanks for watching. Which of these archaeological discoveries did you find the most terrifying? Leave your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to click the subscribe button. Until next time.